Today is May 18th. This is week two of my garden tour. So my blueberries actually, I'm not sure if I even had them in this fence last week um, because we took our old fence out and so our blueberries needed to be protected from the deer. So here's my pepper bed. I have They've really grown quite a bit this week. They are so thankful to be out of the pots they were in for far too long. And I have pretty nice fruit coming in. Um, I'm very excited about that. I even have over here this tomato. <laughs> I'm holding out. This is one of my cherry tomatoes and it was in a pot for far too long. Um, and Oh my goodness, it has a little tomato too. I have a little tiny tomato in there. So I have not pruned the bottom, even though I definitely have new growth on the top. Um, they say it takes about two weeks to see new sets of leaves set. And um, boy, I got lots of new blooms up in there. Um, but they also say that when you're transplanting them, you really want to give them a few weeks to establish their roots before you start pruning. So I'm kind of letting these just hang out and I'm waiting on the pruning process at the bottom. Um, I will eventually do a little bit of a prune to those, but for right now, we're just gonna let it be because clearly it's in its happy place because it has a sweet little tomato there and lots of little tomato blooms. And look at my peppers there. <laughs> they seem to be very happy. Um, my celebrity tomato, well, we'll just kind of have to wait and see, see what happens with that one. Um, I don't know, I've never grown this variety before, so we'll see. Um, I've got nice little blooms on my other pepper, and see this one, I knew about this tomato. I saw it the other day, and again, lots of new blooms up there so i'm encouraged by that even though it's very yellowed at the bottom i honestly think most of the yelling came from um all the rain that we got before we got them potted um so i haven't seen i remounted my potatoes um so this is remounted with some mushroom compost that i put on top to mount them because the uh, shoots were kind of starting to stick out and that's kind of what I've seen with potatoes. I've never done potatoes before, so this is a learning process for me. So, I just mounded up some more dirt, which is what they say. I try not to do too much so I have, so I can mound again. I think you, they want you to mound about three times. So we'll see. <clears throat> These are our original cucumbers that sat too long, the two. And I've actually had pretty good growth on these. And I've already started clipping them. Look at those little cute little cucumbers. Cute, sweet little cucumbers. I can't wait. Beautiful blooms. Um, so they seem to be doing pretty well. Um, my other tomatoes, I mean not tomatoes, but cucumbers, um, that for trellising, I feel like they kind of went through shock. I actually bought these. Um, I'm trying to remember where I got them. I think I got these at Lowe's. I'm pretty sure I got these at Lowe's. And um, I think they were kind of shocked going into the ground because of the leaf changes. But today, after we put the mushroom compost on yesterday, like they're all standing up and saluting. Like they're pretty happy. So I feel okay about it. We'll see. Um, this is kind of new for me. I haven't had this happen before, so we'll we'll see what happens. Johnny's tomatoes, his dwarf tomatoes. I'm trying not to turn the camera because I know I flipped it weird last week, y'all. They have grown a lot. Um, I mean, they really have grown a lot. And these were the ones, the one thing that survived um, that we did from seed. He did from seed. Um, they have survived and. I think we planted here over 36 dwarf 
um, tomatoes. I think there's four different varieties and we're pretty sure that the Lucy is called something Lucy. He's not out here, I'd ask him. Um, the, the Lucy ones are the taller ones. They have had some, some of the um, yellowing and they were not like this before we planted them similar to the cucumbers so we're not sure they're also but they've gotten taller and they have also all set on some new leaves so we're happy with that this is my other blueberry this is actually two bushes in the planter that we did can we companion planted them um, and you're supposed to get a much higher yield on your blueberries and um, we have tons of blueberries <laughs> waiting to ripen. Um, we did pick up a few new things, some new flowers this week. We went out to L Rods out in Dallas. Love L Rods. And we actually scored two different type of muscadine vine plants. We have not, we're actually just gonna pot those this year and in a, in a bigger planter and trellis them up in the raised bed garden um, because of deer until we kind of get into phase two with some more trees gone and we can get more of a permanent in ground structure and some beautiful daisies and begonias some elephant ears scored some pretty pretty stuff um, this is what I'm so excited about so my cantaloupe did similar as the cucumbers um, but they actually are perked up since we put the mushroom compost in yesterday. So that's good. Um, now this was my runner beans that I planted from seed. I have not seen anything yet, but as you can see over here, my noodle beans are coming up. I'm so excited about my noodle beans. I've never grown these. I actually discovered them last year at the farmer's market and we love, I love just to eat them raw, but we loved putting them in stir fries. Very good. My zucchinis apparently love it in here. They are doing quite well. The cucumbers hanging in there. The little poor pitiful little pea pods. I don't know. I think I'll give it one more week and if I don't see anything, <laughs> anything that looks like, I don't know, like it's alive, then I'm gonna pull these out and I'll put something else in here. I'm not sure yet what, but I'll find something that I can trellis in here that'll, that'll go well in this box. Um, my bush beans, thus far, the little bit of green you see is just leaves from the tree that's fallen off in the wind today. I have not had anything come up yet. They usually take about 10 days. And when I filmed last week, I had just planted them. So we still have a few days and they're supposed to have a very good germination rate, so we'll see, see what happens. These are our purple potato bags. I also mounted them up again. And my sweet potatoes have grown a little bit and looking pretty good. And then this was my other seed plantings. I'm very excited about this because I planted peas I believe it was Lincoln peas from Baker Creek, and I planted beets, um, also some from Baker Creek, and then I did a couple different um, heat tolerant carrots from Baker Creek. Well, if you can see those little shoots right there, those are the pea shoots, and so the pea shoots are coming up. Um, those just kind of, I saw just a little bit of them yesterday, and they are starting to break through. And this one I discovered this morning. And those right there are my beets. And I am so excited about that. I, I tried growing beets last fall and I just didn't have a lot of luck with them. And um, I did do okay with my carrots. I overplanted my carrots. But I didn't have a lot of luck with the beets. So I'm excited that I've got some beets coming up. So those are some pretty good germination seeds right there. And then we'll see with carrots. Carrots can be tricky. I know it's kind of late. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if something comes up. And I'm hopeful. I'm still hopeful. I'm hoping out. Because I think those were also 
10 days. The other thing we scored, we actually scored a new peach tree. We've got an Alberta peach tree. We have a Bell of Georgia one already planted. And I really, you don't have to have um, a second peach tree. They're self-pollinating, but they do much better if you do. And so I have been looking for an Alberta one because they're supposed to be really good for our zone. And we found one, it was kind of hid, um, in the nursery up at Tractor Supply up in um, Dallas. And as you can see, it has lots of grass growing. <laughs> And the thing so we have not got these planted yet in the ground we'll get those done later this week and as i told you before with our little apple orchard we were looking for one more apple for this year and i scored a pretty nice uh, golden delicious which is what we wanted i did see a honey crisp i know some friends who were interested in honey crisp they did have some nice looking honey crisp at um, the tractor supply in dallas they have a nursery there it's really nice um but just read up on the whole Honeycrest. They say they're really hard to grow here. And we actually talked to some of the growers up in LJ and they kind of said the same thing. So just make sure if that's what you want to do, um, that is something you feel like you can do successfully. Because that's a big investment in time and money waiting for your fruits. And you know, if it's something that's more challenging. Um, to get started um, <clears throat> The other big thing that happened in our garden I gotta walk out over here. We don't we did a lot of work this week Outside The raised bed garden with our in-ground What we were hoping no-till garden <laughs> But I think we may still have to do use kind of a hand tiller to mix in all of our different we have compost a really rich compost mushroom compost and our soil is just so compacted and so ideally we would have if we were gonna till we would have tilled it up let it sit for a while solarized it we did let this solarize the one that has all the dirt on it um, for probably four months but we had so much rain. It just compacted all, this is where all my raised beds used to be. And it just compacted that soil so deep. And so we used the broad fork to loosen it. And we even got a torch out here and we killed the weeds out there, um, thinking it would be enough. But you really have to be able to get, let me see if I can get that to focus. Can I get that to focus? That's not focusing. You really have to be able to get a good, there we go, a good finger length, like to your knuckle, into the ground for the roots, to have healthy roots. And we just don't have that. So I think we will have to do a little tilling. We have a little garden hand tiller. Um, and so I think we're gonna try to do that to help loosen up this compacted clay we have great worms and stuff so um and then we'll put the weed cloth down we're gonna burn our holes in and this whole garden will be from from seed um and so we were kind of planning that out and reading from the university of i think it was iowa about how best to uh, plant our corn. We have just never had great luck with our corn in years past. And that was one of the reasons we got the mushroom compost because the mushroom compost is supposed to be fantastic for growing corn. So we're hopeful that we can maybe grow us some peaches and cream corn this year. Um, I got good seed, um, so I'm excited about that. And we got a new fence. That was why we ended up out in Dallas because apparently everybody <laughs> and every every other part of Home Depot, Tractor Supply, you name it, bought all the fencing up um, for tractor days, chicken days, to build runs for their chickens. So we had to drive way out there to actually find fencing um, that will cover this whole this whole garden area. Eee, sorry. Um, and I'm still waiting on my garlic. My garlic is starting. You can see it's starting to 
die back. That's what you want before you harvest it. Um, this is my first time doing garlic and I had much better success with my garlic than I did some of my onions. I planted tons of onions and that's kind of what I got and a couple volunteer carrots that came up after the fact. And so I think some of these are even shallots. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with those. Um, so that's kind of my garden tour for week two. Bye.